Hey everyone guys, how are you doing? Welcome to a new video tutorial from IPNewis and today, well, of course, obviously we're in the series of learning React. So in the second tutorial, and this, this is the second tutorial, we're going to learn more about components and understand how they are or how they actually work. So yeah, we're gonna dive into React and start working with it and just try to implement something useful using React over here. So yeah, as as uh, as far as we've done in the last video tutorial, is just go ahead and create it like a simple component over here, while while actually you don't understand what is the components yet. So let me just delete all of that, so we don't need it anymore because we're gonna start from scratch. So let's start by what is the component? React component is like uh, like a class or some kind of an instance of a rendering element so take it as an element like an HTML element but the component is more complicated than that where it can be composed of like multiple elements so you can put like a dev inside the dev there is a hypertext element and another P element and stuff like this all of that inside like let's say uh, the header element so or the header components so just take it as an element an HTML element and this is gonna like facilitate or make it easier for you to understand what is actually a react component so actually as you have said in the or as you have seen in the last video tutorial to declare an element or a component is just using the class keyword so the class keyword is introduced or is available on the ESX or ES 2015 which is the JavaScript or the 2015th JavaScript JavaScript version so they have introduced the class uh, syntax so we can use it over here you can also use a normal function but I don't advise you to go with functions like classes are more or way way much better than than using a normal functions or method to like define a react component now here you give it a name let's say for example we're going to use a header and this header gonna hold all of our header elements that are gonna be like specific for our application let's say for example and you need to extend it from the base class in this in this case the base class is the component so into the react modular we are going to access the components class so we just extend it from that and yeah it's going to have the same structure or the same base methods so every single class needs a constructor so here we need a constructor a constructor takes a props so what are those props are the properties so if you are familiar with HTML elements for example when we type here um, let's say an image so if you are familiar with the image tag on the HTML element so you close that as you can see it's giving me an error so you close it and you need to give us some kind of attribute let's say the width of the image so you insert the width of the image you say I don't know 300 pixels why not and the height for example is I don't know 500 pixels or something and yeah those are the properties so this is how the properties or those are what's or what actually they're called a properties width and height and anything else you can put in name class whatever anything in here is a property so this is what we mean by property and also or actually we can put in or we can pass in properties into our components so we can use it for the rendering process and states managing and updating process and all those kind of things so we need to pass it in into the prop into the constructor so also we need to call in the super function the super function what it does it just calls the base constructor of our base class or of our extended class so the, the class that we are extending from which me which is actually the react component so we're just gonna call the constructor all the constructor is going to does is just initialize some kind of things and just takes care of this property so we can use them properly now also react or into the components what we can do to like manage the state of this particular component whether it needs to render something whether it needs to hide it whether I don't know to like manipulate some kind of an elements in order to like show a specific type of data or hide it or change this data this also what's called the state so the state is going to be controlled over the element itself and it's gonna tell the element when to re-render everything or when to re-render a single portion of this element so we can re-display or update our our data on this particular element so for this state we're gonna just do a dedicated video on that in the next one probably so we're gonna talk more deeply on the state but for now just gonna like render some kind of things and all the other thing we need under the components is the render method the render method is very very important so the render method is going to take care of all of our rendering process so all it does 
So later on, when we try to render, as you can see here, uh, all it does React just just gonna convert that into a real class, create an instance. Then whenever we try to render, it calls that render, and the render method needs to return some elements like a block of elements, and this element needs to have one single parent. What I mean by that, you can't assign. Uh, let's say you want to return, you can you can wrap that in your parentheses as you can see here. And what I mean by a single parent is you need to put it, for example, all of them under the dev, and here you can put a multiple element. Let's say an h1, an h2, something like this. I don't know, uh, h2, or let me just get rid of this h1. Yeah, like uh, as you can see, like this. Let's say this is going to be um, like our header. So try to do something useful with it. So all in, all of them needs to be wrapped into one single element. So you can't put two div elements over here. It's gonna give you an error of it needs to have one parent element. So yeah, you must wrap it into one parent element over here and you can put as much as you want elements under that which are the ch children's of the like base or the root element over here which is like the dev. You can use any particular element or HTML element you are familiar with. This is called by the way JSX. So yeah, that's what we are using it right here. So yeah, uh, the other thing, let's say, uh, I want to like have a small text. This is a small text. So this, all of those are going to be rendered, but we need to put them into the return. So let's say we want to do some logic before returning anything. You can put anything in here. Like you can, you can do an if statement and check for some kind of, let's say there's like a boolean, this dot state dot message, for example, check if it does exist or if it does equals to true, then change something on that before rendering and stuff like this. You can do it here freely with, with no problems actually. So you just take it as a method in here since just a method then returns and what you need to return obviously is a gsx element or uh, a, like a block of html elements in here in order to make them render it into the dom so yeah this is how basically our component is going to work it's very basic this is the structure it has a constructor and a rendering method is going to be called once we need to render and also there's like a couple of methods predefined methods from the react components the base class that will help us do some kind of checking or updating before the rendering or after the rendering of the element. One of them is the component will mount. What does that mean is whenever our components, this component, the header component that is extended from the React component is trying to get rendering. So it's ready and like the next execution step or the next step is going to be the rendering of our element. So this method gonna run before rendering our element. So we can do, I don't know, some kind of initial initializing of our element. We can do, I don't know, some kind of updating. We can assign, and this is like the proper way or the proper place to assign some callback functions or added events listeners into an actual event. So yeah, we will, we will do that more deeply in in like in the next video tutorials on this series but for now as i've said this will take care of components with mouse let's say for example i want to like console.log um components so will be drawn to just to demonstrate that and it's just gonna be rendering before all of that so this is gonna be printed then our element or our component is going to be rendered into the DOM. So here, how we, this is how basically it works. As you can see, just make sure to run the watch over here in order to make everything compile successfully. Now, if you want to render that to the DOM, as you can see, obviously we put it into the React, React DOM dot render, and we put here the element. So all we do is just gonna call our elements, and here what we're doing is initializing. And as I said, the properties in here, which we're gonna talk about more deeply, as I've said in the next video tutorials, but all of them, yeah, you can put in custom properties over here, and you can pass in some kind of data in order to get it into your elements. Then I don't know, you can update and you can render according to this data. You can render it over here and you can use it freely in your components. So this is like what we mean by this properties. It is just an object holding our attribute that we pass in along the initializing of our components over here or offer our elements. So as you can see, like this is how basically it does get rendered. Now let's try to go into our index.html and control shift P and let me just open it in the default browser to see what is actually going to be happening. 
and let's see as you can see we have our header and this is small text if you go back go to the render.js go down as you can see we have small and our header gets rendered over here successfully with no problem so you can put anything in here as long as you make sure you just wrap it under one single uh, parent element the, uh, the other thing I want to mention about if you if you have like a multiple components and you want to include them as you have noticed in here that we can only render one single component or we can only pass in one single component to the render method in the react dom so let's say we have like uh, another component in here I just I don't know some extends react dot components and uh, I don't know like Okay. React.components. And let's say we want to render both of these into the DOM. So all we do is just gonna wrap it under here. So let's say we wanna call the um, another component over here, and it's just gonna be rendered successfully. So here you're just gonna put the render method, like for example, the render method, you put it over here and you can render any elements over here, and it's just gonna be called like whenever we reach or we try to render the first component which takes us into making a little bit better layout so just gonna call this and render it normally with no problems so yeah this fixes the problem of having one single uh, like component get passed in into the react dom dot render method so we have no problems you can pass in multiple elements you can render them when whatever in this like um structure so this like what it introduces layout and what makes react more flexible than any other and then actually any other uh, framework or rendering framework and you get it rendering successfully and yeah that was it actually for the components that was very basic thing and very simple just cover the components and how it works in the next video tutorial probably just gonna go or dive into the states and how you can manage them and we try to make something really cool with react in the next video tutorial so that was it actually guys i will catch you in the next video tutorial